infrastructure, whether educational infrastructure, whether roads infrastructure, the president is working very hard to ensure that Ghanaians get development at their doorstep. We have been told by the president when he was complaining, just like me, he was whining and lamenting about the issue, and he never provided any solution when he appeared on the floor of the house. Mr. Speaker, on Saturday, we heard that Ghana has taken delivery of some buses, but what they didn't add was that these buses were coming from Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, these buses were coming from Nigeria. Of course, I have absolutely no problem if FDA confirms that these are good buses. But Mr. Speaker, the bigger question is that how come Nigeria has excess buses and we don't have? How come that Nigeria has excess buses and we don't have the buses? The buses that we are taking delivery of can only last for six weeks. When they brought a policy to curtail Tumso, they said we should put off our deep freezers. They said we should use one mobile phone. They said we should not be charging phones anyhow. That was, that was the way that they wanted to handle a challenge that emanated from the country. Mr. Speaker, at that time, borders were not closed. At that time, ports were not closed. At that time, we were not asked to stay in our rooms. But they were struggling. We were still struggling to handle these issues. Mr. Speaker, as Commander-in-Chief of our Armed Forces, the President was duty-bound to say a word about the Sherman as Commander-in-Chief because rights had been violated, including the murder of a soldier. Mr. President did simply just didn't find space in the one and a half hours delivery to at least console the family of the bereaved soldier and also to express regret about the abuses of the rights of the people of Ashaba. Mr. Speaker, that was unfortunate. The President simply did not live up to expectation as Commander-in-Chief and I would admonish him to find space and address the nation on Boko and Ashaman.